What's going on there, folks? Good evening. It's the Earth Master here on this Sunday night, January 15th, 2023. It is about uh, 9.04 p.m. here along the West Coast in California. And the latest earthquake activity, got some uh, rather large earthquake activity coming in to the Japan region. Now, it uh, looks like the EMSC is reporting a 5.8. The USGS here reporting a 6.3. 409 kilometers deep holy smokes that is a rather deep earthquake and large earthquake now this is from the usgs uh, looks like it has been reviewed by a seismologist um, so that should be updated here on the map rather soon uh, not for sure why it hasn't updated yet uh, there we go well, it looks like a 6.0 but either way, uh, rather large quake. A couple inconsistencies there with the magnitude from uh, different agencies, of course. But uh, for the most part, I tend to stick with what the USGS is stating. And uh, so far, they're saying a 6.3. It is in a zone that does see quite a bit of deep activity here. Uh, this is historical data since about 1900. Uh, the darker color circles here indicating depth. Uh, the darker they are, the deeper they are in this region of the Izu Trench, about the northern end here. We have been seeing quite a bit of activity uh, specifically within this region. Let me show you guys here. Seen at least three earthquakes of deep magnitudes over the last couple days. Uh, looks like over the last two or three days here. Uh, specifically in this region, this by far though is the largest magnitude and the deepest uh, so far at 409 kilometers with that 6.3 coming in. Uh, also some deep activity, Northern Mariana Islands, also through the Japan Trench and the Kuro Kamchaka Trench. It's just a matter of time before we see activity really ramp up here in this region far as the surface levels go. Uh, waiting to see some, uh, it's got to be a good sized quake eventually when this thing goes here, the Kuro Kamchaka Trench. Just a matter of time, uh, probably a well above a 7.0, 7.5 within this area eventually um it's been awfully quiet but we've been seeing deeper movement quakes along the trench areas uh and this area does see quite a bit of strain uh in terms of the stress out here this is the slip rate plate motion uh greater than five centimeters a year in this area there's a lot that, that uh, kind of goes into this got direction here of uh, movement from the north movement from the southeast here from the pacific plate all kind of crunching this area to create one of the most uh, seismically active zones in the world and it has been quiet in terms of larger scale activity so that's abnormal doesn't look like uh uh you know it's it's gonna come up here soon i believe just a matter of time all right 6.3 409 kilometers deep and as we noted here on the Japan station showed up rather nicely. Uh, now it looks like quite a few stations here just went offline and I'm not for sure why. Um, most of the plate boundary station it looks like just kind of went offline for some reason. Uh, also about the same time here, uh, two minutes prior to the Japan earthquake, we've seen a 5.0 Guatemala area. It has been reviewed by a seismologist. Uh, rather shallow, 2.7 kilometers deep here into this uh, area of Guatemala. Looks like prior to that we did see a 4.5 and a 5.2, relatively shallow. So that could be a good indicator here also of uh, seeing some further large-scale movement into the area of the Middle America Trench. We'll watch this, but this just kind of goes to show you how one earthquake here, uh, even in an adjacent plate, this here is the... Uh, uh, the Na this is a Cocos plate, right? Let me double check. Cocos plate, Nazca plate. Uh, this area moves to the northeast, this plate does, uh, along with the Caribbean plate that moves to the southwest, a subduction zone, the Middle America Trench portion of it. And um, that uh, it's amazing how quick uh, activity can kind of kick up here, uh, thousands of miles away on the opposite side of the plate. Literally within minutes of each other, less than two minutes, a 5.0, and then uh, wham, bam, 6.3 over here into the Izu Trench. A lot going on here with the Pacific Plate currently. 
Uh, so we'll continue to watch that. Uh, California lighting up somewhat, but nothing spectacular. A couple twos, maybe even a three out there into the portion of the San Joaquin Valley outside of Merced, up against the foothills. There's a fault system that runs up here. Um, but that's uh, there's no major swarming currently, but we'll continue to watch that and see how it plays out. Either way, definitely a lot of activity here over the last couple days around the western Pacific and adjacent plates. We'll watch this area up north here, or uh, upstream, I should say, up north, upstream of the subduction zone. This is, a, again, a rather deep earthquake. We'll watch this area up in this region here. A lot of times we'll see this deeper movement quake activity and uh, much larger activity upstream, so... Uh, we'll definitely keep an eye on that region. Uh, continued activity around the Fiji area and also the uh, Tonga Trench. This area here near Fiji seen a super deep earthquake this morning, 610 kilometers deep for that 4.6. A lot of deep movement occurring around the areas, folks, so we need to watch the surface regions. Of course, we had that 6.2 into the Indonesia area. This originally came in, I think, as a 6.1, so a little bit of upgrade here. Uh, 37 kilometers deep. No further westward pressure movement here across the area. Uh, so definitely a lot of activity back building here along the western Pacific. And um, could get rather interesting here really soon. New Zealand, not a whole lot showing up here on the earthquake map. And uh, literally not a whole lot either on to the um, earthquake 3D globe. So either way, that's uh, a lot of movement taking place here, folks. A lot. Uh, let's check out the trimmer map tonight. Just going to kind of make this a short update. 114 epicenters, a little bit here uh, around Victoria, Vancouver Island ranges, and a little bit down here in Northern California uh, for a total of 114 epicenters of trimmer. Not that big of a deal, uh, but still some a uh, little bit of activity kicking up. Yellowstone National Park here. I keep saying that nothing going on, nothing going on, nothing going on. And then, uh, well, over the past few hours, we get a little bit of earthquake activity kicking up here. Uh, in a location, looks like this is occurring into the Mary Lake area around the northern edge here of the, the Yellowstone caldera. That's going to be in this black circle uh, that includes Lake Yellowstone down here. Haven't really seen too much specific activity localized to this region, but looks like there is some activity kicking up here tonight and over the course of the uh, late afternoon time period. So we'll continue to watch that and monitor that uh, as it uh, kicks up. Nothing showing up here on the USGS map. They only, uh, for the most part, will report 2.5 and above on the weekends, and I don't believe any of those quakes were above 2.5. All right, quick glance here. Space weather activity. Man, look at the solar. Oh, man, that is getting high. Uh, somewhat elevated there, 234 for the SFI, the Solar Flux Index. Now here, these guys are kind of mentioning a little bit about it. Uh, with plenty of visible sunspots currently facing Earth, the official Solar Flux Index for January 15th is 234. Uh, this is another new high for Young Solar Cycle 25 and the highest since 2014. Uh, we need to go above 237 uh, should uh, it happen this week. That would be the highest since 2003 during the previous cycle of uh, cycle number 23. Again, we're way ahead on the sunspot number, way ahead on the predicted SFI. Um, almost, well, you could almost say double. So this is going to be a rather interesting solar cycle. We'll continue to watch it. Right now, 15% chance of an X flare, 55% for an M flare, 99% for a C flare probability from these massive, numerous sunspots out here. This is getting pretty crazy looking. Uh, we'll continue to watch all these areas here for the potential of Earth-directed flares. And uh, I still think there's a probability of seeing some X-flare um, activity here soon. Uh, just a matter of time. They can pop up out of the blue, just like a, uh, you know, just like, just like that. We'll definitely keep an eye on it. Right now, sea flares popping. Uh, a couple M flares here over the last couple days up there into the uh, mid and upper M flare category. Uh, let's see, nothing major going on across the auroras currently. Things are somewhat mellow. No major coronal holes facing us. And um, again, we'll wait for these flares and uh, see what they want to do. Looking uh, pretty spectacular. 
very active as we head towards the maximum solar uh, cycle here during cycle 25, which will be around June 2025 time frame. All right, folks, uh, again, stay safe out there. There's a whole lot jumping out here in terms of earthquake activity. That is a rather deep earthquake, Izu Trench region, and uh, it's not, not a four-pointer. That's a major deep movement kicking up here into the trenches uh, just south of Japan. So we'll watch it. Uh, remember, this is going to add further strain upstream uh, and also I think could play a part of what's going on up here along the Kurokam Chaka Trench as well. So uh, be on guard and stay safe out there. We will chat you guys a little bit later tomorrow. And once again, congratulations to our member winner, which was Purple Bullet. Um, Longtime viewer and member here on the channel. Congratulations going out to Purple Bullet. And um, we'll do that again in February, just after Valentine's Day. So we'll do the uh, February 15th time frame. All right, folks, have a good night. Stay safe out there and enjoy what's left of the weekend here. Have a good night.